The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. What is the difference between demons believing and people believing? An interesting discussion is just ahead about demons and can they believe and can they be saved? Thank you for joining us today. This is Grace in Focus, which is the radio broadcast and podcast arm of the Grace Evangelical Society. The Grace Evangelical Society is a focused free grace organization. You can find out more about us at our website, faithalone.org. We have a national conference and regional conferences, and we also have a daily blog that you might be interested in. Find us at faithalone.org. Now with today's question and answer discussion, here are Bob Wilkin and Philippe Sterling. Well, Philippe, I have a question here from Richard, and I think it's an excellent question. As you know, Facebook has lots of theological discussion. Lots of people interact on once saved, always saved. On yes, I, yeah, I follow some, even of the groups. Some yeah. of them are free grace. However, yeah. some of those free grace groups are flexible free grace, and oh, some yes. of them are grace and focus free grace. But what he says here is, I observed an argument on Facebook that begs a question. If the devil believes who Jesus is, and the demons believe who he is, why aren't they saved? And yet all I need to do is believe in him to be saved. What is the difference? The man on Facebook argued that this fact destroys easy believism, I guess that's us, and stated that works are required as well. Can you help me? Well, this is a great question, and it comes up a lot, and it's basically the issue of, is salvation, regeneration, justification by faith alone, or is it by faith plus works? Now, sometimes people will gussy this up, and and they'll say, well, no, it's not faith plus works, it's faith that works, right? And they say, but if you don't have the works, you don't have the faith. I think there's a real easy answer to Richard's question. How come Richard is saved just by believing in Jesus, but not demons or the devil or fallen angels? What's the difference? He says specifically, what's the difference? Yes, that's just it. And I think he's alluding perhaps also to James 2, you know, even the demons believe. James 2, 19, yeah. James 2, 19. But fallen angels are fixed in their state. There is no salvation There is no salvation. But for us, descendants of Adam and Eve, that is something Ding, 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 ding. What's the difference? Richard's a descendant of Adam. Adam. You and I are descendants of Adam. Christ died for us. Right. One man came sin and, and death, and that spread to all men. But Romans 5, 12 right. to 21. But one man, you know, Jesus is life. But he's yeah. only right. giving it through that one man, Adam, right. through his race. Right. There is no salvation for fallen angels. Right. Wow. There is no salvation for Satan. Jesus didn't die for them. So, Richard, what's the difference? Jesus died for you. Yes. Jesus offers you the free gift of eternal life. And by the way, when James says that the demons believe God is one, of course, that's not believing in the promise of eternal life. That's just believing in monotheism. But they are correct in that belief. But we know from the Gospels, remember with the Gadarene demoniac, they say to Jesus, what do we have to do with you, O Son of God? Have you come to torment us before the time? They know that certain fallen angels are currently being tormented before the time. Yeah. You see that in okay. Jude First, and Second uh, Peter yeah, 2. Yeah, right. They are in bonds, right. awaiting judgment. Others are free to whelm like Satan until the time. But they okay. call him, O Son of God. Yeah. Yes. According to John 20, 30 and 31, if uh, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the, the Christ, Christ, the, the Son, Son of God. God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Now, of course, what the Christ, the Son of God, means is explained in John eleven twenty five to 27, that he guarantees resurrection into the kingdom and life that is never lost. He who lives and believes in me shall never die to the human believer, the living human believer. But it doesn't apply to fallen angels. So, in my opinion, Satan and fallen angels do believe 
the promise of everlasting life, not for themselves, but for humans. And one of the ways we know that is Luke 8, 12. In the parable of four soils, when Jesus interprets it, he, he talks about the seed that's thrown on the pathway. And he says, Satan snatches away the seed lest they should believe and be saved. So Satan knows if they partake of the word of God concerning everlasting life, they believe it, they will be saved once and for all. Satan believes in eternal security. He believes the promise of life, but he knows it's not true of him. He doesn't believe that he himself has everlasting life. No fallen angel believes that, nor do any demons believe that, because the promise is to living human beings. I think it's important to recognize what Richard's asking here. There's a huge difference between us and Satan's minions. Again, just knowing, again, the opportunities for us. I think even we think of the lake of fire. That was not meant for human beings. It was for Satan and his angels. Yeah, a lot of people think that God created the lake of fire for humans, but he didn't, right? Right. Their judgment is fixed. Their state is is fixed. But for us, in this life, human beings have the opportunity to believe and have everlasting life and will not come into judgment. Just jumping in here to make you aware of our magazine, Grace in Focus. It is a bi-monthly, six issues per year, 48-page magazine, full color. And we want you to subscribe by emailing your name and your snail mail address to ges at faithalone.org. The subscription is free. It can be accessed electronically or it can be actually physically sent to you if you live in the lower 48 United States. That's our Grace and Focus magazine. Send your name and snail mail address to ges at faithalone.org. I got an interesting one for you. Sharon is taken away with this movie called Believe. Have you heard about it? It's No. Some movie called Believe. It's a Christian movie. And she was showing me uh, on her phone a little clip from it. And the guy's saying it's just by believing. And the other guy's like, that seems too easy. How can it be just by believing? And he's like, well, that's what the promise is. If you believe, you're saved forever. And Sharon was showing me comments because there's hundreds of comments. And these people are going, this is so wrong. You've got to work. You've got to obey. You've got to be baptized. You've got to keep the commandments. And some people are saying amen to this, but a lot of them are saying, no, that easy believism isn't right. You've got to have works required as well. And so I think in that movie, it's real interesting when they're talking about believing, they're saying, look, it's just by faith, not faith plus works. And it leads to a lot of people As questioning it, stir, it. stirs up the passion somehow, right? generating those hundreds of opposite answers. Yeah. People are giving these things and they think it's a contradiction. But the difference is that Christ died for us. Mm-hmm. In fact, they say that in the movie, the clip Sharon showed me, it says Jesus died for us. He's taken away the sin barrier. So if we just believe in him, that's why this works, because of his atoning work on the cross. He took away the sin of the world, and now all that remains is to believe in him for life. Right. We don't have to somehow... Isn't it funny, Philippe, how so many people think we have to deal with our own sins? I got to turn from my sins. I got to clean up my life. I got to do the required works, because somehow I'm part of the atoning work. Jesus' work on the cross wasn't really finished. I got to finish it. (laughs) I got to do some more for me. Now, there is a sense in which, of course, Scripture does talk about sharing in Christ's sufferings, but that's for eternal rewards. That's entering into a messianic experience of being rejected for the work of pointing to Christ. Right? Yeah. You see that in Hebrews right. and you see it all the way through. In First Peter, you know, we're following the steps of Christ. To the extent we share, you know, his suffering, we'll share also in his glory. Yeah, what is that? First yeah. Peter 4.13, yeah, I think. Right. Yeah, I love that verse. Yeah. So it's to the extent yeah. we share, sure. to that extent yes. we'll be glorified. Right. And so, yeah, there is a sense in which, of course, we're called to do good works. We're called to suffer with Christ, but not in order to be born again. Because we're born again, it should produce a wonderful sense of gratitude, right? And love. We love him because he first loved us. 
Yes. That love that we have for him because he loves us spurs us on to obey him, not so that we can make it into the kingdom. That would be work salvation. But because we do know it's a free gift, we want to please him. We want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant, right? And we want to walk in intimacy with him here and yeah, now. now and, and in the future. And in the future. That was also an ongoing intimacy, closer intimacy with him in the future. Yeah, in fact, yeah. in Hebrews, maybe you can turn to it, but I think it's Hebrews one nine. And it talks about uh, being partakers with him. And, yeah, and the oil of gladness, gladness oh. more than all his companions. And companions yeah. is the word partakers. Yeah, well, it's also translated. Do you have Hebrews 1, yeah, 9 Hebrews there? Hebrews 1, 9. Yeah, you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. And that's talking uh, about Jesus. Jesus. Therefore, God, you, God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And we're well, called to be his companions. companions. The yeah, Greek so word is metakos yeah. or metakoi in the plural. We're called to be his companions. And so Richard's question is, look, the Facebook guy should be saying, no, demons aren't saved because they're not living human beings. Fallen angels, Christ didn't die for them. There is no salvation for them. But living human beings can be born again. But the issue of works comes in in terms of eternal rewards, of hearing well done, and of being one of Christ's companions in the life to come, or what John calls overcomers, yes. Nike Christians. Those who will be associated with him in his rule over everything. Yeah. Not actually related even to literature and King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table, right. or Robin Hood and his Merry Men. Or I think of King Henry V, who says, you know, those who enter with me into this battle and gain this victory, you know, they're renowned, their name will be forever. Rewards. On St. Crispin's Day, will yeah. be forever exalted and remembered. Same with us. Those rewards are all through literature, and they're all through well, life. Where well, your job, there are rewards. School, well, there are rewards. The military, well, there are rewards. Your families, there are rewards. Neighborhoods, there are rewards. Awards and rewards are all part of life. And it's not just athletics, but it's all of life. Yes. I mean, in this presidential year and everything, you know, if... You know, those who help uh, get elected to the presidency, well, you might get an ambassadorship, you know, to, That's right. to Romania, or if you are really great. Not you and me, Japan, but, but somebody, somebody else. else. Somebody else, yeah. All right, well, thanks so much. And remember, keep grace in focus. Read many from our library of thousands of free magazine and journal articles online at faithalone.org slash resources. That's faithalone.org. Did you miss an episode of Grace in Focus that you really wanted to hear? Just come to faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We have all our past episodes right there on the site. Our team is really great about answering questions, comments, and feedback. If you've got some, we hope to hear from you. Let me give you our email address so you can do just that. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On our next episode, why do some people refer to initial and final salvation? What are they talking about? Find out next time, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.